right, one more time. Good morning, good morning. Welcome, welcome, welcome to Second Baptist Church this morning on this first Sunday of February, Black History Month, also Men's Ministry Month. I said Men's Ministry Month. Amen, 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 amen. Praise the Lord. We're going to be blessed by the men today. First, we're going to have a song from our choir after that. Prayer scripture, let the church say, amen. Come on, choir. Morning, church. I can't hear y'all. Good morning. How many of you are ready to give thanks to the Lord? I know you already did because you woke up and you are here. So this is an easy song. You all can join in with us. Oh, give thanks. Oh, give thanks unto the Lord. For he is good. Yes, he is. Good. Oh, give. Oh, give unto the Lord. For he is good. Yes, he is. Good. Oh, give. Oh, give unto the Lord. For he is good. Yes, he is. Good. Oh, give. Oh, give unto the Lord. For he is good, for he is worthy, 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 for he is good, yes he, for he, worthy, worthy, for he is good, yes he is, oh give, unto the Lord, for he is good, yes he is. Oh, give thanks, oh, give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good, yes. For he is worthy, 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 for he is good, yes he is. For he is worthy, worthy, worthy. For he is good, yes he is. Oh give, oh give thanks unto the Lord. For he is good, yes he is. Oh give, oh give thanks unto the Lord. For he is good, for he is worthy, worthy, worthy. For he is good, yes, for he is worthy, 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 for he is good, yes, he is. One more time, oh, give unto the Lord, for he is good, yes, he is. Oh, give thanks unto the Lord. 
for he is good for he is worthy 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 for he is good yet for he is worthy 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 for he is good yes for he is good for he is good yes for he is good for he is good yes he is good Morning, second. Good morning. Welcome to Men's History Month. I know, I, I, I know y'all been waiting all year for this, so hey, it's here now. We're gonna, we gonna kick it off, baby. We're gonna kick it off right. But first of all, before we get started with that, we're gonna have a word of scripture coming from the first book of John, John one, first, 1 John, chapter 5. Chapter 5, starting with verse 13. Let me get my glasses on a second. Halfway, see what I'm talking about. Everybody left. Anyway, hey, if I misquote, if I miss a word or two, y'all forgive a brother, okay? <laughs> All right, it reads as follows. It says, These things have I written unto you that believe on the name of the Son of God that ye may know that ye have eternal life, that ye may believe on the name of the Son of God. And in this is the confidence that we have in him, that if we ask anything according to his will, he heareth us. And if we know that he heareth us whatsoever we ask, we know that we have the petitions that we desire of him. We read to you verses 13 through 15 of First John chapter 5. May the Lord have a blessing to the readers, hearers, and doers of his holy word. Let's go to the throne. Gracious Father, once again, we just come thanking you, dear Lord. Thanking you for another day's journey, dear Lord. We thank you for just being God and being God all by yourself, for your love and your mercy that you have shown us, dear Lord. We thank you for the compassion that you showed us, dear Lord, especially during these difficult times. So many people leaving here, dear Lord, too quickly, dear Lord. We just ask that you go by and comfort them, the families of those Breathe, families, especially, dear Lord. We know that your love and your mercy will take us through, dear Lord, of anything that we will go through or that we will encounter, dear Lord. And we just are so grateful for you, dear Lord. We are so grateful for your faithfulness, dear Lord, for you're always there for us in our time of need. So for that, we say thank you. Yes. Lord, we just pray, O oh, gracious Heavenly Father, that we will be able to, that you will uh, strengthen us, dear Lord, that we will be better able to do your will, and that not of our own, Father that you may be glorified, Lord, not that uh, we may be glorified, but that you may be glorified in everything that we say, think, or do, dear Lord, and allow us to be obedient to your word, Father, as we go forth and do those things that are pleasing in your sight. Strengthen us in our faith, Lord, for we know that uh, you are a God that's able to do any and all things, dear Lord. We just ask you, O oh, Grace Heavenly Father, to continue to uh, uh, allow us to uh, come to your house in a unified fashion, dear Lord, for we know that when we are unified under your guidance, dear Lord, that we can do uh, mighty and powerful things, dear Lord, especially for you, dear Lord, especially when we go out to serve you, to show those who don't know you in the part of their sins what they must do to come to be saved, dear Father. And for that, we just say thank you, dear Lord. We continue to pray for this church, dear Lord, and for all your children, dear Lord, especially those in the sick rooms and in the hospitals, dear Lord. Go by and visit them. Let them know that you're still God and you're still in the healing business, dear Lord and that you can meet them at their point of need, Father. We just ask you, dear Lord, that as we go through this uh, uh, service, dear Lord, that your Holy Spirit will come in and rest and reside in it, dear Lord, that we may be led by your Spirit, Father, and that your word will be mighty powerful when it touches our hearts today, dear Lord. For that, we say thank you. We just want to lift up one more prayer to our men's ministry month, dear Lord, that those who are you are using to uh, come forward will do what is pleasing in your sight, dear Lord, and they will be 
uh, giving you all the praise, the honor, and the glory due your name. In Jesus' name we do pray and thank you. Amen. Amen. All right, since I'm here, we are going to uh, introduce our first meditation speaker. Now, you know this person, you know him. He's a busybody around the church. He does many things for God in God's service. He happens to be a drummer right now, playing the drums for us. And he's also now the new president of the men's ministry. And after he comes, Brother Ed Wood is going to come up here and introduce somebody else. So will you receive right now and encourage this brother, Brother Richard Thigpen. Good morning, church. Take my glasses off. I don't want to come over here tearing nothing up like Brother Huey did a couple Sundays ago. Yeah. Yeah, I, I ain't trying to get nothing else new added over here. Um, this, this morning, um, I'm asking y'all to bear with me. It's been a long day yesterday. Um, you know, God always puts you in a situation to be used. Um, I had a brother um, that um, had has a procedure that I needed. He came home, wanted to go get his truck and take his friend home. And um, he blacked out behind the wheel and ran into a, a sign and a tree. And they got him to the hospital and his blood pressure was uh, 90 over 53. They almost coded him. Um, so y'all keep him in your prayers. Brother McKinley Ray, he's the uh, video and uh, audio at uh, Shiloh Missionary Baptist. And my sister Gloria was in St. Joe's where her blood pressure done dropped on her. So keep my family in prayer. Yeah, all of them. Um, I'm going to do this little skit here. It's, uh, it's a believing father um, that used to be a non-believer trying to get his son to be a believer. And um, it's like father, like son is the title. Um, I had um, Sister Latonya, Latoya Hosley Moore to uh, kind of assist me with writing this out. But it's based on a man trying to, fa a father trying to bring his son to Christ, trying to show him how to avoid some of the same things that he went through. So I'm gonna start. Um, father in the home taking your son about, talk, um, talking to your son about decisions he's making after just bonding him out of jail. That's the situation. Boy, I can't believe that I had to leave my job and come bail you out of jail for, for stealing. I know good and well that I've raised you better than that. I work every day for you don't have to steal. What, what, what you say, boy? Come again? Didn't I go to jail for stealing? We ain't talking about me right now. <laughs> Let's stay focused on what I'm trying to get you to see. What you say? What possesses you to steal? Are you on drugs? What did you say? Say it a little louder. Didn't I do drugs? Didn't I say we ain't talking about me right now? See, that's the reason why you keep having your problems. You don't listen. Didn't you um, say that only smoking weed and, and don't do any harm to your bottom, to your body? Huh, could have fooled me. But I, I get your hallucination behind smoking weed. I've been there, you know, so, but when you don't listen to the things and take knowledge of uh, the things that you're putting into your body, it's doing more harm to you than you know. You are making certain smart, you are not making smart choices right now. Skipping school, running around with all different friends and girls who one of them say they're pregnant by you and hanging out all hours of the night after 1 a.m. ain't nothing open but liquor stores and legs. That's what my mama told me. So you ain't got nothing out in them streets that's going to cause you no good after 1 o'clock. Boy, I'm telling you, it's a shame to not use the good sense that the Lord gave you. Proverbs 3 and 5, it says, Trust in the Lord with all thine heart, and lean not into your own understanding. In all thy ways acknowledge him, and he shall direct your path. We keep trying to make paths for ourselves in all our different ways, but we headed onto a path of destruction. 
So I'm just trying to tell you, boy, you got to listen. Well, does what does that have to do with going to jail still? See, now that you asking me, what 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 don't I have? We said, um, now that you asking me, what don't I have kids by different women? Yeah, your mama and your stepmom. That's it. So I don't have no kids all over the world like you're trying to do. You need to make sure you you taking uh, action and the right action for your action. Because there's consequences behind running around. Lord have mercy. I, 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 I'm trying to tell this boy. It's sad that you can pinpoint all the wrong things I did, but overlooking your, the good things I've did. If you want to talk about what I've done, then talk about my biggest accomplishment after. And before you act, no, it's not you. It was the day that I accepted Jesus as my Lord and Savior. Yeah, yeah. That was the biggest accomplishment. He turned me around to see things that I couldn't see and see them from his eyes and not mine. And um, Romans 8, 27. And he that searches the heart knoweth what is the mindset of the spirit because he's making the intercessions for the saints according to God's will. It's like the Father in heaven knows your mind, of, knows the mind of his spirit in us. He created us. God is never going to just put you out there and leave you. We might leave him, therefore we feel that the spirit of God is not in us. That's because we have left God, but God never leaves us. You see, I was just like you, making all the wrong decisions. I knew everything, gave my parents grief. When God changed all of that, Daddy always quoted Proverbs 3 and 7 to me, saying, be not wise in thy own eyes. Fear the Lord and depart from evil. Be, but just like you, I didn't listen. I got myself into trouble, served eight years in the state penitentiary. I'm trying to spare you pain. But just like the Lord chastened me, he will do the same to you. I'm praying for you. I pray you get him before he chastens you. Um, Psalms 27 and... Um, It says, hear, O Lord, when I cry with my voice. Have mercy also upon me and answer me. And, I, you know, we teach our kids that um, call on the Lord. I, I try to tell my son, and this kid is not directly about my son and myself. It's about situations that are taking place in the world today where we want to make our own decisions. We want to solve our own problems. We got all the answers. But if we just wait and listen and cry out to God, he will hear your cry. And he will answer your prayers. And he will direct you in how to raise your son and teach him in the ways to go to avoid the same problems that we ran into as kids. So um, if we trust in the Lord with all that heart, you know, and, and, and believe that, you know, that he will direct our path, we will, we will be better people for our, our children that's growing up. So that's my little skit for today. And I, I, I just want you guys to see that there's a way to raise a child and uh, if you ain't got God in it, ain't no good going to come from. So we need to start putting God first before we want to discipline our kids because we were a kid once before. And I know I didn't make the right choices about everything. And that's why I can stand for you today and not be ashamed to tell you. He will turn your ways around and make your darker days into brighter days. So trust in the Lord with all thy heart. Let him be the guide of your path. And your path will get bright. Thank you. Hallelujah. <laughs> we bless Brother Thickpin. He, he has spoken a mouthful here today. My uh, youngest daughter is here with me, and she was just reminding me, <laughs> there she is up there, that uh, she remembers well when uh, they were growing up, we would bring them here and put them on a bench somewhere and say, now you sit still, play with that doll while we have a meeting, or two, or three. So. Our children, our grandchildren all grew up here, but now I have particular pride. My wife and I have our youngest grandson here, uh, Alan Christopher Bedee, a student at uh, IMSA, the Illinois Math and Science Academy, which has been rated one of the top 10 schools in the nation. And he's been honored uh, to be accepted there, involved in everything he can get involved in. So today he's uh, 
agreed to come and give us a solo. So Alan, come up. Morning, church. <clears throat> it don't matter. And I, hey, hey, I wasn't going <laughs> to. Richard said, use this. <laughs> Good morning, church, again. <clears throat> there was a bake sale at a local church. One of the younger ladies at the church said to one of the mothers, she said, I can't be fooling with all these cookies and cakes and all this stuff. I'm, I'm, uh, I'm fasting. I got this new dress I'm trying to get into. <laughs> so the mother, she said to her, she said, well, if you fasting and you're not praying, Child, all, all you doing is dieting. <laughs> so the young lady had a confused look on her face. So the mother took the time to school her. She said, listen here, young lady. When I fast, I pray. I'm not trying to fit into no dress. I'm trying to find and fit into God's purpose for my life. <clears throat> <clears throat> the lesson today is from the 40th chapter of Isaiah. Faith in the power of God. Now, we got a lot of stuff going on here today. It's first Sunday, so you already know what that is, so have a good day. Isaiah is one of the five major prophets in the Bible, along with Jeremiah, Lamentations, Ezekiel, and Daniel. They're followed by 12 minor prophets in the Bible, 
starting with Hosea, going all the way through to Malachi, which is the last book of the Old Testament. <clears throat> Hezekiah, King Hezekiah, he was warned by Isaiah the prophet that Babylon would carry away Judah, Judah's wealth, and Judah's people off the Babylon as punishment from God for the people's sins. His point is, this happened a hundred years. He was warned, and it, it didn't happen to a hundred years later. So, the lesson is about God. In order to have faith in the power of God, Isaiah took the time to remind them because they had forgotten God's qualifications. Matthew 8, you'll find the account of Jesus and the disciples on the ship. Wind blew, waves raised, water splashing all in the boat. They feared for their life, and Jesus was asleep. So Jesus got up, he rebuked the wind, and he rebuked the sea. Now, the rhetorical question was asked, what manner of man is this? Even the wind, and not just the wind, every element obeys him. God used wind and water at the exodus out of Egypt at the Red Sea. He used a pillar of a cloud by day and a pillar of fire by night so the children of Israel can travel both day and night. Wasn't no GPS, wasn't no Google map. We, we talking about God, y'all, talking about God. And if you was paying attention, two weeks ago, Sister Kim and the choir told you exactly who God is. Now, you may have gotten mesmerized by Brother Kendall's mastery on that organ over there. <laughs> so you, you, might not have, you might not have caught the words. The choir, they said, God is the joy and the strength of my life. He moves all pain, misery, and strife. He promised to keep me, never to leave me. He's never, ever come short of his word. That's God's part. Your part. I've got to fast and pray. Stay in the narrow way. He keeps my life clean every day. I want to go with him when he comes back. I've come too far, and I never turn back. God is, God is, God is my all in all. The God that we worship and serve, he has never showed any weakness, nor has he had any scarcity of any resources. The point that Isaiah was trying to get across. God has been there all the time. But sometimes we, we have a tendency to take God for granted. Because the stuff he does for us, he does it so effortlessly. We sometimes we just, just take take it for granted like 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 we're old that. But it's his grace and his mercy that keeps us. Second Chronicles 15 and two, and I'm, and I'm gonna sit down. It says, 
If God be with you, and you be with him. If you seek him, he will be found by you. And if you forsake him, he will forsake you. But the good part, brothers and sisters, is the verse that says, God will supply all your need according to his riches in Christ Jesus. That's all I got to say. Y'all have a good day. <laughs> Big Mama say, <laughs> say something, sing something, and sit down. So I said something, I was about to sit down. <laughs> okay. If it had not been for the Lord on my side, where would I be? Where would I be? He kept mine enemies away. He let the sun shine through a cloudy day. He wrapped me in the cradle of his arms when he knew I'd been battered by the storm. If it had not been for the Lord on my side, where would I be? Now, if my brother Roosevelt was here, this is what he would say. If it had not been for the Lord on my side, tell me, Lord, would I be? Where would I be? Yeah. Not been for the Lord on my side, tell me, Lord. Would I be? Where would I be? Amen, Brother Huey. Amen. Amen. All right. It's offering time. Bring all the tithes to my storehouse. Maybe meet in my house and prove me now. Here with us said the Lord of hosts. So you want to open up the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing that may be room to receive. Come on, ushers. Let us pray. Lord, we thank you once again for your blessings on this morning. We thank you for the tithes and offering that was given in your name. We ask you to continue to bless this, your people and this church in Jesus' name. Amen. There's an earpiece that somebody might have missed or dropped or lost. So whoever it belongs to, it'll be up here. So. Amen. Come on, choir.
strength like no other reaches me. You are my strength, strength like no other, strength like no other, and it reaches to me. Come on, say, you are my strength. You are my strength. Strength like no other, strength like no other, strength like no other, it reaches, it reaches, say you are my strength, you are my strength, strength like no other. Strength like no other. It reaches, reaches. Come on, say it one more time. Say, You are my strength. You are my strength. Strength like no other. Strength like no other. Reaches, reaches. See, God, you are my strength. Strength like no other. Strength like no other. It reaches to me. Say, in the fullness of your grace, God, in the fullness of your grace, in the power of your grace, you lift me up. Say, in the fullness of your grace, God. And in the power of your name, you lift me up. You lift me up. Come on, say, you are my strength. You are my strength. Yes, God. Strength like no other. Strength like no other. It reaches, it reaches. Come on, say, You are my strength. Strength like no other. Strength like no other. It reaches, reaches. Come on, lift your voice. Say, in the fullness of your grace, God. And in the power of your name. You lift me up. You lift me up. Say, in the fullness of your grace God and in the power of your name you lift me up you lift me up see oh in the fullness of your grace and in the power of your name and your name is Jesus. There's power in that name, Jesus. There's power in the name of Jesus and the fullness. And in the power of your name, you lift me up. God, you lift me up. Say in the fullness. 
greatness of your grace, God. And in the power of your name. You lift me up. Say you are my strength. You are my strength. Yes, God. Thank you, Lord. Strength like no other. Strength like no other. It reaches to me. Say you are my strength. Even on dark days, he's your strength. Yes, God. Thank you, Lord. Strength like no other. It reaches to me. And in the fullness of your grace, God. And in the power of your name. Yes, God. Thank you, Lord. You lift me up. You lift me up. Say in the fullness of your grace, God. And in the power of your name. And his name is Jesus. Demons tremble at that name. Bodies are healed at that name. Souls are saved at that name in the fullness of your grace, God. Oh, yes, God. You lift me up. Yes, Lord. You lift me up. Come on, everybody, say, You are my strength. Yes, God. Thank you, Lord. Strength like no other. When you feel like crying, he's still strength. Yes. Yes, Lord. It reaches to me. Yes, you are my strength. Strength like no other. It reaches to me. And all the people said, amen. amen, amen, amen. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord. Let's put our hands together again for our choir. <laughs> praise the Lord, praise the Lord. And we thank God for our men. Yes, say amen. For our men, yep, yep. Good to see all the men in the house today, and we look forward to the unfolding of Men's Ministry Month this month. Yeah, yeah, I was personally happy to see Brother Allen sing a solo. Yeah, yeah put our hands again, yeah. Yeah, when I found out he sang for the school a while back, I said, Deacon Wood, can you, see, can he do a solo for the church? And lo and behold, hello, hello. So. Amen. Good, 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 good work. Good job. God bless you, brother Allen. And see, good to see you too, sister Erica. God bless you. Amen. Praise the Lord. All right, all right, all right, all right. God bless you all. Our theme 
is the authority of God's purposes in perilous times. Yeah. We, we are in some times, you all. I talked to so many people, and we all agree. Pastor, there's so much going on. It is. But God is faithful, and God is good. And we felt led this morning to deal with a message. Uh, There's a little teaching involved. And I'm a, I'm a visual brother, so I, I brought my shopping bag of props. If I can lay eyes on something, I'm less likely to fall asleep. Hello, somebody. Yeah, so y'all bear with me this morning. I want to read three passages of scripture. Revelations 3 and 10 is the first one. James chapter 1 verse 2 is the second one. And Hebrews 12, 1 through 3 is the third one. All these passages talk about perseverance. Yeah, not giving up. Let me first start with Revelations chapter 3, verse 10. Jesus is speaking. Because you have kept my command to persevere, I also will keep you from the hour of trial which shall come upon the whole world to test those who dwell on the earth. Yeah, that's Jesus speaking, Revelation 3 and 10. Yeah, saying because we keeping his command to persevere, he's going to keep us in the hour of trial, which shall come upon the whole world to test those that dwell on the earth. Yeah. Moving now to James chapter 1, verse 2. My brethren, count it all joy when you fall into various trials, knowing that the testing of your faith produces patience or endurance. But let patience have a perfect work that you may be perfect and complete, lacking nothing. That's the second passage. In Hebrews 12, starting with verse 1 through verse 3, Therefore we also, since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight and the sin which so easily ensnares us and let us run with endurance the race that is set before us looking unto Jesus the author and finisher of our faith who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross despising the shame and is set down at the right hand of the throne of God for considered him who endured such hostility from sinners against himself, lest you become weary and discouraged in your souls. We want to talk about perseverance in failing times. And I have three pictures or three points to present to you. First one is perseverance brings protection. Second is perseverance involves a personal trainer. And third, perseverance brings the finish. Yeah, that's what we want to talk about this morning. Yeah. Sunday school lesson this morning talked about eagle's wings. Men's Sunday school class, Ethan Sonder was talking about eagle's wings and how eagles fly. And I've noted a contrast between when eagles fly, they don't do a lot of flapping. God made them to just spread their wings, catch a thermal updraft, and they soar. Are y'all with me? They depend on the wind beneath their wings to soar. Now a duck 
does a whole lot of flapping. They don't get too high, and they don't get too, they don't fly too long. Brothers and sisters, you and I have to look in the mirror right now. In these times we're in, turbulent times, have we been working more in our strength, flapping and ain't flying too high? Or have we been spreading our wings? and soaring with God as the wind beneath our wing. We can go a whole lot further just spreading them. Let God produce the wind and the upcurrent. And we can go many, many, many miles, a long distance, like that eagle, can fly miles, many miles, and not even flap one time. How many times does a duck have to flap just to go one mile? <laughs> How much effort and work am I putting into my life, especially in these times? Brothers and sisters, the bottom line here, have I been thinking about giving up? That's the opposite of persevering. We're here to encourage all of us to persevere. Part of the problem, much of our society is governed by social media. Social media is a big instrument in causing me. Uh, it, it, it increases the phenomena of what I call monkey see, monkey do. What I see on social media can have an influence on my brain. You know, sometimes they spend millions of dollars on a commercial during Super Bowl for the effect that commercial has on the brain. So you know, if they're spending millions for just a 30 a second or one minute commercial, what all day on social media can have on the brain. Hello, somebody. And brothers and sisters, the social times we're in, the scripture calls it a falling away. Where folks are going the other way from the Lord. Yeah, 1 Timothy 4, 1, Spirit said in the latter times, many going to depart from the faith. 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 3, and I don't want to deceive you. Uh, there's going to be a falling away, and a man of lawlessness is going to be revealed. Hello, somebody asked a question in Bible study. Uh, Reverend, what do you think about that Trump fella? <laughs> hello, 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 hello. And my response, I am spiritually suspicious that, hello, the qualifications could be there. And I hope I'm wrong, but I am suspicious. Qualifications could be there for the man of lawlessness. How does the man of lawlessness even rise? Because so many folks are falling away from the truth. And the text said they're going to follow a lie. Right here in the text, y'all. So many people are leaving the area of doing right. And they're endorsing wrong. Y'all hear what I'm saying? So many people are leaving faith. And succumbing to fear question is, are you and I going to join them? Hello, y'all. I hope, I hope it's a resounding no. We're in times, though, when even those of us in the church, those of us in Lebanon churches, those of us in Baptist General State churches, our numbers are decreasing. Many of my pastor friends report, yeah, pastor, I don't, I don't see as many in prayer meeting now. Uh, some say prayer meeting, that's something we did years ago. I don't see as many in Bible study. Not as many coming to worship. And community outreach, what's that? Hello, y'all. Many of our churches, we're losing to the mute button. Y'all know what that is, right? 
That's when you're online and some forget to mute and some forget to line out their audio or their visual. Hello. Especially when they take a bathroom break. <laughs> Hello, somebody. In contrast to the falling away crowd, you and I have to make a, a choice. Am I going to flap like a duck and only get so far? Or am I going to spread my wings in the Lord and let him do the work? It is the difference between persevering in these times versus giving up. And the first picture I want to present to you all is what Jesus said in Revelations 3 and 10. He says, uh, because you made a mental commitment to persevere, I am going to keep you during the hour of trial that's going to come upon the whole world. These are the words of Jesus. The forecast, the whole world will be subject to a trial. Was COVID the beginning? Perhaps. It was worldwide, y'all. Hello, somebody. But the Lord has promised. He says, I will keep you. And so in these times, brothers and sisters, you and I have to decide, am I going to depend on my two hands to get through in this life? And reaching my bag now because there's a third hand here a third hand much bigger than mine I you know I'm a little visual so y'all might forget what I'm what I'm saying but you you're not gonna forget this hand <laughs> is there a third hand in my life do I operate on my two alone the third one is much bigger. We can't see it, but it's no less there. He promised to keep you and me if we just continue to persevere in him. How many of you talk to the Lord today? Y'all hear what I'm saying? If I were you, I'd rather talk to him than talk to myself. These hands can only do so much. But his hand, I'm telling you, his hand has been with me, y'all. I done found out personally with some stuff going on. It's a blessing to be kept in the hands of the Lord, y'all. With his hand, Hello, y'all. You can just spread your wings, and you can go a long way because you're in his hand. Hello, y'all. That's the first one, y'all. Yeah, 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 yeah. Now, now, to stay in his hand, each of the messages and revelations end with he who hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit is saying to the churches. So my point now is that if I'm going to, be blessed with the benefit of a third hand. I got to also have a third ear. Your, your, your two ears here in the natural. But the text say he that have an ear to hear what the spirit is saying. Hello, somebody. I got to be able to hear the Lord to follow his direction. To go in, in, the, in the order and direction he said go, to be kept in his hand. How many got that third hand and that third ear? All right, that's the first picture of perseverance. Now here come picture number two. James here says, count it all joy when you fall into divers' trials and temptations, knowing that here comes the testing of your faith produces patience. And patience is a word for endurance. Now the key term here is testing of our faith. 
to produce endurance. You all, the most important muscle you have on your body uh, is not your triceps or your biceps. Hello, it is nice to be able to, you know, work your arms and your legs, your hips. Hello, even your brain is considered a muscle. But the most important muscle you have on your body is your faith muscle in the eyes of God. And I got two weights here in the pulpit. One is two pound and the other is a five pound. Hello, most of us, especially the brothers, men's ministry point, we can handle these like nobody's business. This is considered lightweight. Y'all hear what I'm saying? Yeah, in the gym, you don't see too many of these in the gym. Those are heavier weight. But in the area of faith, many of us might not be as heavyweight as we think. Hello, somebody. In the area of faith, it may be some two-pound Christians in here and some five-pound Christians in here in the area of faith. But it doesn't matter what your number is. God's interest, if I'm a two-pound faith Christian, he wants to bring me up to five. And the way to increase my, 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 my weight is to test my muscle. And he will subject me to trials to stretch and strengthen my faith muscle that my muscle will endure. Y'all hear what I'm saying? Even ducks need muscles to fly the distance they fly. Y'all hear what I'm saying? Eagles need muscles to stretch out their wings. What shape is my faith muscle in this morning? Building body is one thing, but building my faith. That's God's interest, y'all. Where you at this morning? Two pounds, five pounds, ten pounds? Where, where your faith at this morning? Has it run out of gas? That's what God does not want to happen. Now, if I can work on building my faith, like them brothers be at the gym building no muscles, there might be fewer trials in my life. Y'all hear what I'm saying? But wherever you and I are, the test suggests that God is our personal trainer. Amen. Amen. Your number don't matter whether you're two or five. But God, as your personal trainer, wants to increase you. He wants to strengthen you. And here comes 1 Corinthians 10, verse 13. No, no trial or no temptation has taken you, but such is common to man. But God is faithful. He won't put no greater load on you than you can bear. And he'll regulate it such that he'll make a way to escape. Y'all hear what I'm saying? And then when you get delivered and you look back, you're going to say, oh, Lord, I am so much stronger. Y'all hear what I'm saying? Many of us now wouldn't have the faith that you have right now if it wasn't for those trials you went through that took you from two pounds to five pounds. Hello, somebody. All right, thank you all so much for working with me with picture number two. And now, brothers and sisters, here come picture number three. Picture number three, Hebrews 12, shows us that we have a great cloud of witnesses who's gone before us. Great crowd of witnesses. They are waiting. They've gone before us. They have finished the race. And here, the Hebrew writer is saying, for you and me to focus on the race that is in front of us. Lay aside every weight and every sin which be easily entangles us. And let us run the race set before us with patience. So my closing illustration in picture three, we got a gym shoe here. 
Because when you put these on, your mind is set for running. Right? You're set for finishing the race. Do y'all hear what I'm saying? That's what this gym shoe is for. Y'all hear what I'm saying? And when you got this gym shoe on, you ain't packing no luggage, no Gucci bags, no, no, no overloaded purses. Y'all hear what I'm saying? I, I, with these on, I'm not traveling like the Beverly Hillbillies. Everything in the kitchen sink. Lean and mean. Y'all hear what I'm saying? And, and he said, so reduce your weight that you carry in these times. And a lot of us are carrying a lot of load inside. We look good on the outside, but we got a lot going on on the inside. Let that weight go, y'all. What's in the past, leave it in the past. Take the lessons, but leave the baggage. Y'all hear what I'm saying? And then he said, uh, let go of any sin, too. Because, brothers, we're in times now where, you, you know, yeah, we, we in the house of the Lord, but, you know, if there's sin in my life, it can boomerang back on me. Especially the text says God, the, God's judgment will be hit, begin with the house of, 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 of God. And if it's going to begin with us, where will the sinner appear? That's what Peter says in 1 Peter 17, y'all. So we're in times now where if there's purpose and willful sin in our lives, the Lord might judge that thing. Y'all hear what I'm saying? And I do get news reports of brothers and sisters in the church with, you know, some stuff going on in the background. And some have come up dead. Y'all hear what I'm saying? Y'all stuff is going on now. So I need to lighten my load. Y'all hear what I'm saying? Focus ahead with my eyes. Where? Hello, somebody. And this is my last prop. Got some binoculars. Hello. So gym shoes to lighten your load and binoculars to keep your focus on Jesus. Y'all hear what I'm saying? Sometimes you need binoculars. You got to stop looking at where you're at right now. You got to stop looking at how messed up the situation is that I'm in right now. And I got to put these on because it helps me to look forward. It helps me to have a vision of something past how messed up right now is. Yeah. And y'all know sometimes we can get so frustrated. Hello, y'all, so discombobulated with the messed up circumstance we in right now. Y'all hear what I'm saying? But sometimes the right now can, can mess with our minds. It can pull us into a pit. Pull out the binoculars and look down the road and see that vision of Jesus. He said, behold, I set before you an open door. Y'all hear what I'm saying? Where you're at is darkness, but look forward. He opens a door. Now the devil's going to tell you that that light at the end of the tunnel is the train. Y'all hear what I'm saying? The devil's going to tell you to go ahead and give up. Turn your lights off. Go get your concealed carry. Don't use it on nobody else. Use it on yourself. He wants you to give up and give out. But with Jesus, y'all hear what I'm saying? He is that hand, y'all. And he's increasing your faith to not give up, y'all. He wants you to lighten the load. And he wants you to keep your eyes on him. Y'all hear what I'm saying? Run that race, y'all. Y'all hear what I'm saying? And if you in his hand, we ain't going nowhere until our time comes. No matter whose obit is on Minor Morris's sight, y'all hear what I'm saying? God is going to keep us in his hand until my time comes. Y'all hear what I'm saying? And when my time comes, y'all, I ain't going to be trying to stay here. I ain't going to be trying to hold on. I'm going to lean forward like a runner, 
lean past that finish line. Because on the other side, Jesus is waiting. On the other side, grandmama going to be up there. Granddaddy going to be up there. My sister going to be up there. And they all cheering for me. Come on, brother. You can make it. Come on, Larry. Lean into it. Hallelujah, y'all. When my time comes, it ain't a time of sorrow. It's a time of joy. 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 Ain't he all right? Ain't he all right? Say yeah. That's exactly why Jesus stayed on the cross for the joy that was set before him. He had a focus. He had us on his mind. He saw the right hand of the Father. And that focus allowed him to endure what he endured on the cross. None of us could imagine being crucified, heckled at, laughed at, tortured, persecuted, and he never did anything wrong. He died, but early, Sunday morning, all power in his hand. So brothers and sisters, the times that we're getting in now, it's not getting any easier. Not trying to sound negative, but I am trying to encourage you and me to have that focus. No matter what you hear on the news, no matter what you hear from the community background, focus past the here and now and keep your eyes on Jesus. You ain't got to depend on your hand. You got a third hand. Hello, somebody. Use that third ear. Be encouraged, everybody, to persevere and not give up. The doors of the church are open. Is there one? Come on, come on, come on. Is there one? Come on, come on, come on. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Uh, why? Holy. Do not pass me by. Say, say, yeah, in my humble While on others I call only do
Amen, amen, amen. All right. All right. We have, we have some who are coming to the altar for prayer. So come on, you all. Come on, come on, come on. Let's, amen, amen. Let's believe God. Let's believe God. Come on, come on, you all. Church, I'm coming to stand in the gap for me and Mr. Michael here. There's a lot of issues going on with Mr. Michael and myself as far as sometimes we tend to disrespect people that we shouldn't be disrespecting, the ones who love us and stuff. So I didn't want him to have to come up here and stand alone because I know that he wouldn't do it on his own. So I brought him up here. I just pray that you um, will lift the stronghold that the devil has on both of us so we can learn how to respect other people and their property and their whatever they're going through. Amen, amen. All right. Let us go to the, the Lord in prayer. Gracious God, our Father, Jesus, we have an intercessory prayer. Thank you for Milvertha, who's standing in the gap for our beloved Sister Connie Dillon who's in the room right now, Lord. We ask in the name of Jesus that you would superintend through the doctors and nurses to touch her. We know she's been experiencing weakness or about any other complications. We love her, Lord. And we know she loves you. We lift her up in the name of Jesus. Touch her body, Lord. We pray for a breakthrough regarding Connie Dillon. We plead the blood of Jesus to cup in the name of Jesus. And now, Lord, we lay hands on Sharon Parker Love. In the name of Jesus, we anoint her with oil representing your presence, representing your healing. We ask you to cover her, Lord, as she's also facing follow-up tests and procedures for a condition that you know all about. Keep her in the name of Jesus. We pray for healing. We pray, Lord, for open door. We pray in the name of Jesus, Lord, that you would strengthen her from the inside out, that you are present. We thank you for Sister Sharon Parker love. We lift up her body, mind, we keep her in the name of Jesus. Now, Lord, we thank you for Michael, and we thank you for Darius. We pray, Lord, for their relationship. We thank you, Lord, for both of them. Cover them in the name of Jesus. Give them both wisdom and discretion. And we pray that all that has happened will result in their growth, that they will be stronger. Thank you in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord, for Darius, for his oversight. And thank you for Michael, for how far you brought him. Bring Michael into your purpose for his life and continue to strengthen Darius in his purpose for your life. This is our prayer. In the matchless name of Jesus, we pray. Let everybody say amen, 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 amen. All 
All right, do we have any new members in the house who have not received the right hand of fellowship? Anyone in the house who has been baptized but has not received the right hand of fellowship? All right. With that said, we will now ask the deacons to stand. We're going to get ready to go into communion. Oh, okay, thank you, thank you, thank you. All right, all right. Let's uh, go ahead and do announcements before we go into communion. We're going to ask the media when we return the mic up, uh, be ready to put new batteries in it because I think it's going out. Good morning, everyone. We have a lot of February birthdays, right? All the February people stand up. Kendall's going to give us a big happy birthday. And we're going to sing because we're rejoicing in them being here. you stood up last month. Oh, okay. I just met up with him. All right. We do have some items in the pantry over next door. So if you go over after church, we do have some items on the table over there in the pantry. All right. Uh, the Gems prayer line, you know, every first Tuesday, we pray for the Gems program for the children. Sister Deborah Cole uh, spearheads that. And so at 2 o'clock, we will be on 1-605-313-4820, and the code is 158-244. And if you did not get that, you can see me or you can see Sister Cole after church to get the um, call-in number. But we are praying for our children. We pray for them every first Tuesday at 2 o'clock on the phone. So please, 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 if you can, uh, get those numbers and call in with us and pray for these children. Let's don't talk about them. Let's pray about them. Amen. All right? Amen. All right. This Saturday, we have um, our senior outreach. Sister Sharon, raise your hand. This is our president. Amen. And she wants you to be her personal guest Saturday at 11 o'clock. Uh, we have several good speakers, professional speakers, speakers that can help you move on as being a senior. So come out at 11 o'clock Saturday. Please bring a dish. But if you don't want to, come anyway, because we'll have plenty of food. We always do. But come out Saturday. <laughs> Sharon said yes. Come out Saturday at 11 o'clock for our senior outreach, our monthly outreach um, ministry. Please come out for that. Okay. The ministers, deacons, and trustees' wives have several requests of the church, and uh, one of them is we are trying to keep God's house straight and clean. And so we came out a couple of weeks ago, and some of us dusted and, you know, kind of straightened up the pews and different things. Well, next Saturday at 10 o'clock, the ministers, deacons, and trustees' wives will be here to clean and dust because we've had a lot of... Um, work around here and it's left a lot of dust and whatever so if you want to come out you know tie your hair up, you know put on some gloves and <laughs> maybe put on an apron whatever you want to do but come out Saturday at 10 o'clock and help the ministers deacons and trustees why I mean nine I'm sorry sorry y'all nine o'clock <laughs> come out and help us uh, clean the sanctuary because we want to keep God's house clean and we want to be presentable and when visitors come we want them to, you know, really say, oh, my, this is such a nice, you know, place and everything. So we want, let's do that Saturday at 9 o'clock and then 11 o'clock come out for the seniors to eat. So, oh, okay. Um, also, we need to, the office and uh, several organizations are requesting that you, if you change your phone number, which some of us change every other week, so if you change your phone number or your address, please let the office know. Yes. 
because we can't keep up with you if you, you know, we don't have your right cell phone number, your landline, whatever. Please let the office know. Give us that courtesy, please. Also, um, the pantry needs help on Thursdays. Um, several of us come down. Some come real early. Stan comes real early. And, um, you know, to help pack the boxes and all of that. There's lots of food that comes in on the trucks. You want to be a help to somebody else, come and help us pack the boxes, help us sort the meat, help us do all the things that we have to do before we take the food out to the sidewalk to give it to the public. So come on out if you have a chance anytime Thursday, as, you know, as early as 8 o'clock, and then 2 o'clock we are passing the food out as the cars line up. And those cars go all the way down Ottawa Street sometimes. So we have a lot to do on Thursday. So please come out and help us with the pantry. And I thank you. Okay. Yeah. I just have two quick announcements. Uh, I've been, our dear beloved pastor mother, Sister Rosalind, Rosalind uh, having a birthday on the 12th of this month. The yeah. women of second wanted to encourage her and so we'll be getting birthday cards and encouragement cards <laughs> and give them to Deborah next Sunday so they can present them to her. You know, she a caregiver, she going through all the stuff all us women go through. So we want to encourage her. Yeah. And also the book discussion starts this Friday on the night, Sarah Drake Robinson, woman involved. So it'll be at seven o'clock online. Thank you. Okay. Just a few more quick announcements. Uh, we usually try to have uh, in the mornings before service starts, sometime after the end of service, the announcements up on the screen. So please pay attention. Those phone numbers and those access numbers were on the screen and there will be again. Uh, one of the other announcements we received, and I tried to put up on the screen, but I'm not an artist, so it didn't look too good, but it's up. Uh, one of them was, if you haven't picked up your envelopes or giving statements, please stop in at the finance office and get that. The other one was if you would like a copy of the budget, which we're going to vote on next week. That announcement is in the uh, scrolling. The ushers will have a, a, a copy available as you leave today. Uh, if you are not, see it doesn't look too good, but it's up there. If you were not here for the annual meeting, you may get a meeting book in the finance office if you would like to have that, okay? Finally, uh, this being men month, what do you think about our first, uh, start to the first week of men's month? Okay. We're going to ask the church for the second week in men's month to wear red. Red will be the color for next week. If you will wear red somehow, we would appreciate it. Third week will be green. And then the last week. Uh, will be African attire, any assortment of, and Brother Calvin is signaling me, so. I know you're in the Baptist church and you're all used to it, so let me, let me make it plain. We're asking the men for a $200 donation and the women for a $100 donation to help uh, this church move forward. So that's the, what we're asking for for a men's ministry month. So if you... Uh, don't want to give a hundred? You can give three hundred. We won't. We won't complain. Okay. <laughs> but do the best you can. Thank you. And uh, th there will be a meal on the last Sunday. Somebody, a couple of people, have been asking about it. I'm not the cook, so I don't have details. But uh, as soon as we can, we'll have details of the meal that's been planned for Men's Day. All right. Amen. Amen. All right. All right. Amen. All right. We want to keep the bereaved in prayer. We had the funeral concluded services for Brother Ferdinand Augustus Range III yesterday. And concurrently, while going to the cemetery, I uh, was told that uh, Terry Morris had seven hearse on the way over to Victory City for the uh, funeral of the Nance family. So we do want to keep them in prayer. 
yes, the Nance family uh, bereavement. And uh, yeah, Nance and Esther, thank you, Deborah. Yeah, uh, that was yesterday. So we're gonna keep that family in prayer. And Christine Esther's had joined here at Second Baptist Church. Yeah. So, uh, and the Howard family, keep them in prayer as the arrangements with Ken Howard will be starting next Thursday, four to six at Minor, and then here at Second Baptist, nine to 11, 11 o'clock funeral. Uh, I'm sorry, next Friday, next Friday. Uh, he's a veteran, so Abe Lincoln, the appointment there is one o'clock. So next Friday from nine to 11, 11 o'clock funeral for Ken Howard. Yeah. Uh, we got a call from Mary Patterson. Her brother, Ernest Perkins, has passed away on January 30th. They are asking for a memorial service, so that's pending. So let's keep all these families in prayer. All right, all right, all right. With that, let us stand. Rem Harris. Oh, see? I need help. Yeah. I need help. <laughs> All right, Deacon Stan, come on, come on, come on. Let me do the right hand of fellowship. Let's all stand for the reading of our church covenant. It's on the screen. Let's all read together. Having been led, as we believe, by the Spirit of God, receive Lord Jesus Christ as our Savior, and on the confession of our faith, having been baptized in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. We do now in the presence of God 
angels and his assembly so solemnly and joyfully enter into covenant to one another as one body in Christ. Engage, therefore, by the aid of the Holy Spirit, to walk together in Christian love and strive for the advancement of this church in knowledge and holiness, to give the place in our affection, prayers, and services of every organization of human origin, to sustain this worship, ordinances, discipline, and doctrine, to contribute cheerfully and regularly, and to us toward his expenses, to support and faithful in his venerable ministry among us, the relief of the poor, and the spread of the gospel throughout the world. In case of difference of opinions in the church, we will strive to avoid a contentious spirit, and if we not unanimously agree, we will cheerfully recognize the right of the majority to govern. We are also engaged to maintain family and secret devotion studying diligently the word of God, to religiously educate our children, to seek the salvation of our kindreds and acquaintance, to walk circumspectly in the world, to be kind and just to those in our employ, and faithful in the service we promise others, endeavoring in the purity of heart and goodwill toward all men to simplify and commend our holy faith. We further engage to watch over to pray for, to exhort, to stir up each other until every good word and work to guard each other's reputation, not needing and exposing the infirmities of others, to participate in each other's joy, and to the simple sympathy bear one another's burdens and sorrow, to cultivate Christian courtesy, to be slow to give or take offense, but always ready for the reconciliation be mindful of the rules of the Savior in the 18th chapter of Matthew, to secure without delay and through life and then evil report and good report, to seek to live to the glory of God who has called us out of darkness into his marvelous light. When we remove from this place, we engage in some other people, we guide to some other church where we can carry out the spirit of this covenant and the principle of God's word. Amen. Amen. Testing, testing, testing. All right. Amen. Reverend Elmer Harris will now give us the prayer of consecration. Gracious and eternal God, our Father, Lord, we look to you, Father, to say thank you. Thank you, Father, for the shed blood that you shed it on Calvary. Father, it's because of what you did, we're able to stand at this table today, Father. Oh, Father, as we stop to think about as you shed in your blood, Father. Oh, Father, as you gave your life for sinful creatures such as us, Father. The bread we will take will be remembering your broken body. The wine we will take, Father, the cup, Father, will be because of what you done, your blood that was shed on a cross on Calvary. Oh, Father, so that we would have the right to be able to call on you as adopted sons and adopted daughters, Father. Father, right now, in the name of Jesus, I pray, Father, that you never allow this memory to leave us, Father, that we will always remember and always be able to tell somebody about the God we serve. Now, Father, we ask all of these things in the master's and wonderful name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Everybody focus, focus, take out your binoculars, focus on Jesus sitting at the head of the table. Focus on Jesus preparing to become the Lamb of God to take away the sin of the world. The record is he took bread, he blessed it, he broke it, and he passed it to his disciples. And after that, he took the cup and after giving thanks, he passed it to his disciples. As, see, as Jesus so did, so shall we do right now, passing out the bread and the cup. Let everybody say, amen.
all eyes on Jesus. As he took bread, he blessed it, and he broke it, and he passed it to his disciples. Foreseeing his body, battered, bruised, beaten, crucified. Jesus said, this is my body, which I have broken and passed unto you. For often as you do this, do this in remembrance of me. For all he gave, all he asked, is do it in remembrance of him. Take it and eat it. And after that, he took the cup. And after giving thanks, he passed it to his disciples. And foreseeing the blood spewing from his body, from being beaten, from the crown of thorns on his head, from the nails in his hands, the nails in his feet, and the soldier's spear in his side, Jesus said, this is my blood of the New Testament shed for many for the remissions of sins. And I now say unto you, I shall no more drink of the fruit of the vine until that day, and that day shall come. I drink it anew with you in my Father's kingdom. Drink ye all of it. And they sang a hymn, went out to the Mount of Olives, and all the people said, Amen, Amen, Amen. amen. God bless your heart. Everybody stand. Let us look to God. Gracious and eternal God, our Father, Lord, we come to say thank you one more time and again, Father. Oh, Father, for the shed blood, Father, for the cup, for the broken body, Father, the bread. Father, we thank you for how you continue to bless us throughout the course of this day. Lord, we pray that you would use us to your glory. Oh, Father, that we will go forth to tell somebody today about Jesus. 